there's something pretty significantly wrong here. This is not a brick wall. This is, that was uh, not on purpose. We're in Goshen, New York, and behind me is an 1892 Victorian that needs a ton of work. So this house is listed at 299,000 and similar size homes are actually going for more than double that cost. My name is Nick Schiffer. I own NS Builders. We focus on high-end remodeling and new home construction. So this home is a five bedroom, three bath, 4,000 square feet. And today I wanna to walk through the space room by room and figure out what it would take to make this home livable. When we make our way around the house, we're gonna to wanna to go around and make sure that the masonry is sealed, it's cleaned well, it's repointed, and just structurally sound throughout the entire space. Really great window sills, solid material. The basement kind of flares out, giving it that almost column feel. And then as you go up, you start to see all of the brick details. Great detail here where, you know, at the bottom of these windows, it's square, and then it cuts on an angle up. So you're kind of softening the, the space between the windows. And then above the windows here, you're getting these small arches, which if I were to guess, I would assume that when you start getting into the home, you're gonna start seeing more and more arches because you're starting to get those details here on the front. Additionally, the roof is a slate roof, which I love. It's an expensive roof in the beginning, but the overall shape of it is probably a B plus. We're going around and just doing some miscellaneous repairs on that slate roof. That roof will last another 100 years if it's kept up well. One of the things I would probably uh, recommend, and I don't think it's necessarily removing the, we'll call it the medieval field stone, but maybe restoring the front porch here. The woodwork detailing is really nice. A lot of this can be cleaned up if it is indeed solid, but then you can come back and do a traditional wood handrail fairly inexpensively. Obviously pulling off the greenery and the shrubbery is going to really open up this front porch and make it just a more inviting detail. Let's talk about cost. Number one, the masonry. Realistically, we're probably in that $20,000, $30,000 range to get the facade of this house updated, cleaned up, and prepped for longevity. We talked about the front porch. You're talking about having a carpenter on site and then just reviewing all of the framing for the porch, making sure the columns are structurally sound, and then detailing out and talking about replacing those railings with a more period accurate detail. So at that rate, we're probably somewhere around another 10,000. I'm stoked to get inside, look around, see what the condition of this house is, even more important, what the potential is. First impressions, wow. There's huge ceilings in here. You can see the continuation of the arches. You have this awesome, almost Gothic lancet window type molding here where you have basically an arch that comes to a point at the very top. This is something interesting. This is actually a detail that we've used in a lot of our new projects. You have this herringbone pattern and the herringbone is essentially pointing your way into the home. And psychologically, I believe that when you walk through the front door and you have this floor kind of guiding you to bringing you into the home, you're almost like forced to walk forward. If you had say a flat seam that you're walking, it's almost like you're tripping over the seams. If it was vertical and you were running down it, it's almost the bowling alley effect. So really cool detail, something I would absolutely keep in this place. But let's talk about the rooms in the front here. You have some really great rooms that are really grand. You have a continuation of the arch, a lot of natural light. It does look like that some of these walls have been updated with new plaster. The moldings, you can obviously see an abundance of recessed lighting. I'd probably change that. I think that for whatever that recessed lighting was installed for, it is overdone. And it's interesting to see that, actually this, this pulls over here as well, that Gothic window where it goes up to a point. Really interesting to see this above a fireplace. So I'm curious to know, uh, frankly, how that fireplace was vented because typically your fireplace would have a flue directly up and out, but it would be interesting to know if they constructed this way back in the 1800s with masonry that led the flue up both sides of this window. But really cool, really interesting detail. Another thing I noticed is the floor. There's something pretty significantly wrong here. You can't tell, but I'm at a much lower elevation here than I would be over there. The floor is buckling. To me, that says structural issue. Structural issue doesn't necessarily mean it's you know, an exorbitant cost, but it's a cost. The benefit of buying a brick house is this is probably a localized problem. This wall here is a structural brick wall. So if this floor fails, it's just failing from the brick wall. The brick wall is not also failing. 
this is another actually indication. This paneling here, that paneling is still in great shape. It's still straight, but here it's not. So to me, what that says is this is not a brick wall. This is, that was uh, not on purpose, but <laughs> this is not a brick wall. It's a wood frame wall. So that wood frame is not a structural wall. It's sitting on the floor system and it dropped with the rest of this floor. You don't want it to get worse. You're stripping this floor and you're reframing this floor. Realistically, it's about a week's worth of work from demo to getting this place back ready for the floor. So a couple guys for a week, you know, we're back at that $10,000 number to get this floor repaired and ready for floor finish. So when you talk about value and what you want to do here, it really all depends on what the end goal is. So say you do buy this property for under $299,000 and you do want to do a renovation and say the top of the market in this area is $700,000. That gives you about $400,000 of wiggle room, which you can certainly invest in a home like this. What I would consider, you know, the aesthetic to approach this, the Stephen Harris of, of design, you know, the level of detail, we're, you know, easily five, seven, could be even up to $1,000 per square foot from a renovation cost. Now that's a lot of money. Now I think of that another way where if you were to say over invest in a project like this and spend an enormous amount of money, you've certainly narrowed who might be interested in this home, but you've created something that is beyond just a market value home. You've created ultimately a piece of art that someone can live in. This could be a really great mud room. Not really sure where the kitchen goes yet, but thinking that with the layout of the home, with the more formal on the front, this becomes all of the entertaining space and utilitarian space. And this big glass panel lends me to believe that maybe this space was used for a commercial space at some point. I'm not sure in what life or style home a big glass window like that would be installed in a house. Over here, this looks like it could be another maybe TV or den or some sort of sitting room, maybe a first floor office. Again, I'm thinking that this space may have been used for commercial. Really interesting above us with these ceiling tiles where if you were to see them in the photo, you might think that they have a beautiful coffer and ceiling in this space. But in fact, they're plastic tiles from the local lumber store. Again, the floors are in really great shape. I think that's something that this house really is benefiting from is that, you know, there is damage to the hardwood, but the majority of it's in good shape and the damage that is here can be easily fixed. Similar to the walls, the ceiling, that drop ceiling panel, that would go as well. And I would just bring it back to, you know, a really high ceiling plastered. One of the things that happens when I walk around a house is my mind changes a lot. And as I walk back here, I realize that this is going to be a much better space for not only the mudroom I talked about in the front space there, but also the kitchen. Over here, we actually have a really great spot for a proper mudroom. The space in the front there, while it would work, I'm flipping my thought process here and saying that this makes more sense because it's more private, it's separated, you can tuck a powder room back there, you can have a bunch of lockers and have all your stuff kind of hidden away from your guests. But really just open this entire back of the house up into one space and building a grand kitchen, essentially an eating kitchen or a dining area that spills its way back into those front rooms that then can become the living and sitting rooms. I look at this back wall, there's natural light coming through these two small pieces of glass here, but maybe this lends itself to being, you know, a big piece of glass, a slider, some sort of exterior door that you can walk out to a private patio. You could have a grilling station out there. You could have seating out there. And essentially, you know, you're gonna have a big island maybe in this direction or headed in the other direction. But this small room, we just get rid of all of this. This all goes away. We open this wall up and this opens up into what was that other fireplace in that room with the glass wall. So originally I had talked about maybe using that room as a mud room, powder room. But in fact, I think that this becomes the more informal eating kitchen, more modern way that we are living these days rather than the separated or compartmentalized kitchens and dining areas. So this house is over a hundred years old and we have to realize that we live differently than you know they did back then. Back then, everything was compartmentalized. It was to create privacy for possibly the servants in the kitchen or the kitchen just wasn't a place that people congregated. And nowadays, that's the number one place. You know, people entertain in their kitchen. They want to sit down around the island. They want to socialize. And that's the way we live. 
In respect to that dream home versus you know, what it takes to make this livable, if we're gonna be opening this space up to lend itself to be more of a valuable space in general, building a kitchen, appliances, cabinetry, things of that nature, and also finishing that addition in the back, realistically, we're gonna wanna budget somewhere around $100,000. Anytime we're doing a kitchen, it really does spill out into the rest of that first floor. And that's exactly what's happening here. So all of those portions are what spills out of the kitchen design. So I'm dying to see the upstairs. Uh, I'm not gonna use this back staircase. I wanna go up the front one because I think that staircase will stay uh, and it'll be interesting to see. So let's head up there and see what we can do. So coming up here, this lends me to continue my thought about this place being used for some sort of commercial aspect. You come up and you have this double set of doors, one that has a keypad on it. I think regardless of what we do with the rest of the space up here, this just goes away. You have a great oval window directly across from the staircase that wants to let light in. They tried to allow that with the glass doors, but it's just unnecessary for an entire second floor of this home. The tile here, very outdated. Unfortunately, they've installed it flush with the hardwood. So we would wanna go and rip this out and try to find something that is going to match or maybe we can salvage it from another area in the home that may not have um, hardwood in the future. This stuff is rotted. This is not repairable in the sense that we could reinstall this. This would be stripped back. And we want to look for areas in the home that we can salvage some of the hardwood and reutilize them. We need a couple bedrooms and a couple bathrooms up here to make this a livable home. Right off the bat, I feel as though this side facing the street has an enormous amount of light, lends itself to being the primary suite. Again, we have another window above the fireplace. Super interesting to see how this is built and vented. Uh, it does look like, might have an animal up here, but it does look like it's active. At some point they've added gas, but they must have used the left chase for downstairs and the right chase or vice versa to vent this. But the window above the fireplace is really, really unique. I think simply just, you know, again, whiting out all of the walls, getting a more, you know, uniform palette is just gonna make this place feel a lot brighter, lighter, and more modern. It's interesting because you have these really square windows and on the outside, you do have this arch brick. You wanna make sure that what you're doing on the inside is not negatively impacting the outside. So in here, I look at, all right, well, I have square casing. I think one of the more natural things and, and a relatively easy thing to do is to just replace the casing on the top of the window with something that is arched and maybe plays off this arch or maybe this arch becomes modified or you could do one continuous piece of molding that kind of captures the two windows together and not these two separate windows. Let's talk about dream home or the more expensive option is to actually create what we call a Juliet balcony. And I would increase the height of the brick opening and I would actually install a double wide door. And that door would open up and you'd have just a railing across. It's not a balcony that you can step out, but the nice thing is you'd be able to open the door up and you'd have this really great natural light. One of the things that we're doing when we're building and or renovating is we wanna understand morning routine. When you don't think about the flow of how a suite works, you can impact someone else's sleeping pattern. So for us, we're thinking about, all right, when you get up in the morning, that flow should be through the bathroom, you know, touch base in the closet, and then exit that space. Not in the bathroom, back through the bedroom, into the closet, back in the bedroom, back out. We wanna think about it as a flow and kind of this one continuous motion all the way throughout. So for me, you know, I see the turret, I naturally immediately say that's an amazing spot for a bathroom. You don't need much space to get a sink, just a shower and a toilet. Now you're lending yourself to having a really big walk-in closet that you could access right off the bathroom, access the hallway for the suite, and then the office is accessed also through the hallway or possibly both. So let's talk about dream home because this, I've, I'm, I've been obsessed with this area of the home since we started this conversation. I look at you know the, the bathroom, especially in the primary suite, as being this ultimate experience. This should be the wet room, the shower, basically playing off the shape of this round wall, getting rid of everything in here 
and essentially having this massive rain head that just kind of sits above you. All of the walls are maybe a waterproof plaster or a tile or something. The whole entire floor is draining as one big shower. I would even leave the windows. Now I wouldn't leave the exact windows that are here. We would replace them with a fixed unit and we would add privacy film up to about shoulder height. The reason I say up to shoulder height is of course you need the privacy, but when you're able to sight through a window, it actually adds a level of depth. It adds a level of space. It's not gonna feel as claustrophobic. So obviously the shower would be amazing, but there's all of this additional space up here, which lends itself to its own special space, whether it's a quiet space or a meditation room or something like that. And I can only imagine the views that you have up there. So it would be almost wasteful to block it off and create just a shower down here without understanding how we could regain access to that space and utilize it. Um, again, creating an additional feature in this home that becomes an additional talking point. Being able to capture the primary suite on this end of the house makes a lot of sense. You have the work from home potential office here in the front. And then over there, this was originally a five bedroom. We wanna be able to capture at least two, maybe three additional bedrooms over there. Doesn't get us back to that five number, but we do wanna make sure that we're getting the amount of bedrooms that this house deserves, being 4,000 square feet. But that makes me wonder if there's additional space maybe in the attic that we can capture even more space. Looking around the attic here, one of the things I'm looking for is daylight. And there's some small areas that you're seeing daylight through the sheathing on the roof. Whatever is below the slate is either compromised or damaged or simply just non-existent. So those are gonna be areas that we want to adjust uh, or modify or make repairs on. And that's where we start getting into the complexity of the roof repairs. So being a full height attic, you know, with the two, possibly three additional bedrooms downstairs, this lends itself to having the ability to be possibly two additional bedrooms up here. Realistically, to make the home livable, I think that this just kind of stays as is, certainly not an area that needs to be adjusted. But looking into that next step or even dream home status, you know, there's a lot of square footage up here that can be utilized, whether it's bonus space, additional bedrooms, work from home space. This home is awesome. There's a few things I really like about it. Number one, as we talked about outside, it's a brick home. In general, the condition of the outside, from what I can tell, is in really good shape. Even up on the roof, the slate roof is something that can literally last forever with the proper maintenance, just like the proper maintenance of the brick. From a fixer upper, say you're trying to do a flip or maybe live here and try to do it in a more inexpensive route. We talked about $100,000 in the kitchen. Realistically, that's trickling throughout the first floor. There's a lot of the first floor that you can leave. The floors, a lot of the walls could be simply just patched and repainted. A good majority of the trim can really be patched and painted. You're going to have some rooms that do need to be boarded, plastered, trim. The bones of what you have going on here truly do lend itself to being easily brought to a point where it's livable. Going back up to the roof, yes, there are some leaks up there. Yes, there's daylight and there's holes everywhere, but I don't really see that being this major deterrent as far as like that's gonna blow the budget. There's a lot of really great details that I would love to hold on to. A lot of that centers around the windows and how they're connected to the outside. We really don't want to impact that or change it. Hardwood floors, I think, are something else that they're gonna have a ton of character in them, even after they're refinished. And then even thinking about some of the archways and the original millwork and the original doors and even the staircase that I'm sitting on, all of those things should remain. But at the end of the day, if you wanted to get this house livable, I think a three to $400,000 budget to do that is certainly obtainable. You might look at this project and wonder, can you do this? Is this a do it yourself type project? Is this something a weekend warrior can tackle? In my opinion, the answer is never no, but you know, looking at a home like this and the scale of work, this is definitely something that you're going to wanna to pair up with a professional. Now, if we wanna talk wild in the dream home, I think that you know we're gonna easily double or possibly triple or even quadruple that. With a million dollars, you would be able to touch this home in a way that from the outside, you have respected and restored what once was. And on the inside, you've taken that into a realm of a more modern day living with more open concept on the first floor, more natural light throughout the entire home, and just really thoughtful approach to the design to make sure that it works for modern day living.
A good friend of mine always says that you're basically building a house with a house in the way. That couldn't be more true. For someone that is looking for a really cool project, this is definitely it. I would absolutely recommend purchasing this property. Great location, it's a great lot, it's a great home. There's a lot here to be celebrated. It just needs another chance. I was gonna say a second chance, but it, I think it's already had a second and a third. It really needs a fourth chance at life and a thoughtful one at that.